Hey everyone, 3D Hero here, and welcome to today's latest build video that are designed around your general entertainment. Today, I have a heavy broken build that is designed around preventing players, either veteran or new, from being one shotted from tempered monsters, while at the same time giving you a chance to fight back at all ranges and not feel completely useless in fights. Today, I present to you my tempered tank build, which is quite honestly a lifesaver for heavy broken users. So the general gist of the build is to focus on increasing your survivability and team survivability by at least 100% by preventing you from being one-shotted from known tempered monsters such as Nergenetes dive bomb attack or Black Diablo's unexpected charge attacks etc. With this setup provided, you can prevent such attacks from happening but also at the same time you can fight back with your heavy bowgun of your choosing and be a real team survivor or player or wh whatever you want to go with. Just to note, this build can also be used with the sword and shield Lance and Gun Lance, and well to be honest, generally anything that has a block mechanic, as it works great with them either way. So here's my build and the following gear I'm currently using. My weapon I'm currently using is the Water Cannon 3 with a Vitality Jewel and one empty level 1 jewel slot. You could go with the Power Shield 2 Heavy Bill Gun which offers a slightly better ammo recoil control, but I find that it lacks the ammo types that I tend to use in most fights. So. I genuinely came to the conclusion to use the War Cannon 3, which offers me the ammo that I do use, and it's slightly better in terms of mod customizations. My mods I use are two shields and a recoil suppressor, as the weapon doesn't need any more shield defense, as it's already pretty tanky as it currently is. Now, you can add a third shield if you want to and become even more tankier. It's entirely up to you, but I added this because for the weapon here, certain types of ammo that I'm currently using do have kind of a kit back to it. So I added a recoil suppressor to negate some of that. But of course, if you want to, you can add another shield onto it. Or maybe you can focus on the reload speed of it. Or maybe attack on long distance or short distance. It's entirely up to you what you want to go with. But this is what I currently go with. I, and I recommend that you experiment with it first. And then see whether the weapon fits for you. Or whether you want to swap the weapon for another heavy bow gun. Or generally another weapon in category. I've also augmented my heavy bowgun with a attack, defense and extra slot increase, so my build can be a bit more viable in all areas, but you don't initially have to go with what I have, you could go with more damage to make up the less DPS you do, or you could add in more dual slots so you can have more dual options available. And now next, my armor set. I currently use the Eurogun Hell B with a tenderizer dual and a defense dual. My chest is the Basal Mel B with a defense dual and a vitality dual. Gauntlets are the Eurogun Van Braces A with a defense dual. Waist is the Ban Koyo B with a Vitality Jewel. Legs is the Yogan Grease B with a Tenderizer Jewel. And lastly, your charm will be the Blessing Charm 3, which allows you to negate up to 50% of damage when it activates. But just remember, it doesn't activate all the time. Sometimes it activates in moments that I really need it, other times it won't activate whatsoever. So it might be up to you to decide on whether you want to go with this, just as a backup in case you get in a situation where you're not blocking or whether you want to swap it for something else, maybe more DPS, or maybe you want to fit more of a supporter role where you can help your teammates out. It's entirely up to you how you want to go around with this. Overall, this will all give you Guard 5, Defense Boost 4, Health Boost 3, Divine Blessing 3, Weakness Exploit 2, Thunder Resistance 1, and one empty level 1 jewel slot that you can add whatever you like into it. I personally at times use the Scent Jewel as Depending on the mission I'm going on, if I'm going on a tempered run, I usually go ahead and collect as much footprints and evidence from the tempered monsters to build up enough information so that I can use it to get more investigations for tempered runs. That's what I usually do on most games. Now, you could probably go with that as well, or you can go with something else that may be handy for you. I don't generally know what you may want to go with, but it's entirely up to you with what you want to fit into that level 1 dual slot. Now fashion wise, it's not the prettiest in terms of design, but let's remember, as long as it functions well, then that's all that matters, right? But anyways, I designed this build as a way to help groups of players from dying so much in tempered monster runs, as I have had too many encounters where a player would get too cocky with attacks, and get one-shotted by Chiostra's Nova Bomb, or Nergiante's Dive Bomb. With this build here in mind, it allows you to soak up any type of damage and still be able to pump up damage and kill the monster in name. Now the current build you see is designed around heavy build gun users, as they have a lot of flexibility in terms of damage and spacing, so they don't need to worry about getting up close with the monster, and can support at distance by either providing more DPS or bait the monster in, and let the monster do their special attacks on you, and thus save everyone else. 
Of course, you can also use this with a lance or a gun lance as well, where they can take on the heavy damage and counter very effectively. And thus also be bait, so the monster will focus on you, and your teammates can recover or help out depending on the situation. Within the video, you can see evidence of me soaking up damage and taking on minimal to no damage whatsoever, which can also be backed up with using a vitality mantle and health boosters as well, to which they can make you kind of impossible to kill for a few seconds only. But a few seconds is all you need, as the DPS coming from your teammate should be enough to weaken the monster. Add in you switching from attack to defense every now and then, and you'll literally become a walking tank. Now, one thing to note though, this build is more designed around group play rather than solo play as the monster you face won't always focus on you, so you can switch ammo type depending on the fights. But I highly advise you not to use this in solo play if you're going up against a monster that has quick attacks, as your defense will be tight enough to stop the monster's attacks, but it won't leave you enough room to counter back. Use this against monsters that are completely slow, yeah that's completely fine, but use this against monsters that are completely fast, and like I said before, you won't get a lot of opportunities to fight back against the monster, unless you're using something like Palico Valley which I haven't exactly tested it out yet, but it could work in the near future, but it's kind of risky, depending on how aggressive your attacks and your partner's attacks are going to be. Now, the downside to this build is that it's not unstoppable, sadly, as you will still take damage from the monster even when you're blocking. So, if you want to make it effective, make sure the monster you're facing is either slow or generally easy to counter and look for opportunities to attack. Don't always go on the gun ho and always keep attacking the monster and then block in. Look for opportunity to attack, hit weak points as much as possible, and when your teammate is still in trouble, use ammo types that can get the monster's attention. Or even better off, use a challenger mantle and let the monster focus on you. Doing so will free up enough time for your teammates to recover, heal up, get their weapons ready, and then come back and attack the monster. And while you block as much damage as you can, then you can back off, go heal and such. But do remember, like I said, it's not unstoppable. You will still take damage nonetheless. Unless you decide to go ahead and play around with it on the lance. So that everyone comes to the end of the video. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then a like and a sub would be appreciated. Do comment in the comment section if there's anything you want to know more about the build. But for now guys, do take it easy and I do hope to see you again soon.